After being rejected by his herd for having different skin, a young zebra with no stripes decides to cross the desert alone and discovers that he is destined to save the entire herd. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Kumba, from 2013. In the Karoo Desert, in an oasis surrounded by a tangle of thorns, lives a herd of zebras, who have exclusive access to the only lake in the area. One day, when he realizes that Lungisa is about to give birth, Nigel goes after Siko and tells him that his son will be born soon. When he approaches his wife, Siko is relieved to hear that the baby has been born healthy and all the other zebras gather around Lungisa to meet the new member of the family. However, when they realize that only half of Kumba's body is striped, everyone is horrified and starts making fun of him, except his parents, who consider the little guy to be perfect just the way he is. From the day Kumba was born, the rain clouds disappeared and, as time went by, the lake began to dry up. Despite being the laughing stock of other kids his age, Kumba becomes best friends with Tombi, who considers him special because he's different. However, Themba doesn't approve of her sister's friendship with that weirdo and doesn't miss any opportunity to tease him. Seeing his son in trouble, Siko wants to go and defend him, but Lungisa, who is very ill, asks her husband not to do so, as Kumba needs to learn to protect himself. That day, while walking alone in the oasis, the young animal meets a praying mantis and the insect draws him a map in the sand. Then Tombi shows up to see if his friend is okay, but Kumba considers himself responsible for causing the drought, so he believes he deserves to be excluded by the others. Unlike all the other members of their gang, Tombi doesn't think it's possible that a single zebra could make all the water in the oasis disappear, but her opinion isn't enough to console Kumba. When he leaves, the young animal approaches the fence and comes across some oryx asking for help, because the old animal in his herd is ill and needs water. In order to help them, the zebra decides to open a passage and allow the animals to cross the fence. In doing so, Kumba comes across a large herd and is surprised to discover that there is a whole world to be explored on the other side of those thorns. When they notice the presence of intruders in the oasis, the whole herd gathers to form a barrier and prevent them from approaching the lake. So the oryx decide to leave and as they are crossing the fence, a hungry leopard appears. While attacking the antelopes, the feline smells the young zebra and walks towards it. Immediately, Kumba tries to lower the branch and gets his father's help to close the fence. Furious, Pango sends word to Makulu, the leader of the pack, that he can't keep the zebras hidden for long. If it doesn't rain soon, the zebras will have to go out to look for water and food, so Pango will be there waiting for them. After the scare, Kumba goes to visit his mother and brings her some food, as he knows that Lungisa is not in good health. Realizing that her son is upset, she decides to reveal to him the meaning of his name. Lungisa says that, according to legend, the first zebras to exist on Earth had completely white skin and no stripes. One day, a young zebra went on a journey through the vast Karoo Desert and, at the bottom of a huge mountain, he found a magical lake. This young animal then decided to swim in the lake and, when he came out of the water, his body was covered in stripes. He was proud that his skin was different from the others, but when the rest of the herd saw his stripes, they all decided to jump into the lake and look like each other. Lungisa tells this story to show her son what a privilege it is to be different, but upon hearing the legend, Kumba understands otherwise and decides to go in search of this lake. He immediately runs to look at the map drawn by the praying mantis and comes to the conclusion that the insect was trying to show him the way to the magic lake. Hours later, Kumba sees all the zebras gathering around his mother and discovers that she is eliminated. Seeing the suffering of his father and the rest of the gang, the young animal feels even more encouraged to set off on his journey, hoping that if he gets stripes, the rain clouds will return. When he crosses to the other side of the fence, Kumba comes across an African wild dog and Skulk says he can take him to the magic lake. After a few minutes of walking, the pair come across Mama V and Bradley. Just then, other wild dogs appear and decide to devour the zebra. Skalk's initial idea was to use Kumba as a bargaining chip to get water from the zebra shelter, but when he realizes that his friends have banded together to attack Kumba, the dog joins the rest of the pack and surrounds the animal. However, Mama V decides to protect him and attacks all the predators that try to get close to him. Thanks to her enormous size, the wildebeest manages to get rid of the dogs and takes revenge on Skalk for luring Kumba into a trap. When he discovers that the zebra is on his way to a lake, Mama V and Bradley decide to accompany him and the three of them follow the clues left by the praying mantis. That night, Siko is desperately looking for his son when Tombi finds the map drawn in the sand and discovers that his friend has gone. She immediately decides to go out to look for him, but Siko asks her to stay there to look after the gang while he goes out to find the animal. Skalk is gathered with his gang at dawn when Pango appears to devour him. In an attempt to get out of the situation alive, the dog tells him that there is a young zebra walking in the desert and shows him the way they went. During the walk, 
Bradley starts to get scared of Pango showing up and, when Kumba asks who this guy is, the ostrich reveals that he is a leopard with supernatural powers. When it starts to get cold, the trio decide to take a break and Bradley tells the story of how he ended up in the desert. The ostrich used to live on a farm, but ran away to get his freedom. Mama V, on the other hand, doesn't like to talk about her past and decides to leave it buried. Meanwhile, Skulk takes Pango to the last place he saw the zebra and the leopard decides to follow Kumba's trail alone. Hours later, Siko shows up and sees the feline's footprints mixed in with his son's, and comes to the conclusion that Kumba has been eliminated. Saddened by the cub's perishment, he returns to the oasis and breaks the sad news to everyone, but Tombi can't believe that her best friend is gone. In the morning, the trio takes a break to eat before continuing their journey and Kumba spots the three mountains that were drawn on the Mantis map. At that moment, their hope is renewed and they gather energy to make another long walk. Suddenly, a herd of antelopes approaches at high speed and they try to escape, but they can't get through the fence. Luckily, the impalas stop the runs before running over the three friends and decide to help them through the wire fence. The herd then continues on its way while Kumba and his new friends continue in the direction of the three mountains. Even after the young animal's disappearance, the rain doesn't reach the oasis and, a few days later, the zebras start fighting each other over the water. However, the herd is afraid to leave, as they all believe they will suffer the same fate as Kumba. After facing a long journey, the trio finally receives their well-deserved reward and manages to reach a lake. However, after his first dive, Kumba is frustrated because his stripes haven't appeared. Suddenly, a small group of animals from different species approaches and welcomes the new residents of the Ying Animal Sanctuary, where South Africa's most varied species take refuge. The problem is that this is not a natural sanctuary, but a shelter built by humans, where the animals are mere attractions. Upon discovering the truth, Kumba decides to continue his journey in search of the real magic lake, but Mama V and Bradley reveal that they won't be accompanying him, because now they've finally found a place where they're safe from Pango. When the humans show up, they try to throw tranquilizer darts at the zebra, but it's Bradley who ends up getting hit and faints. Realizing that he is being hunted by these people, Kumba flees and is pursued by the vehicles. At that moment, Mama picks Bradley up and they both go to meet their friend, who is in serious trouble. Kumba tries to escape in every possible way, but ends up being surrounded and captured by a truck. Determined to save the young zebra, Rabbit jumps onto the windshield of the truck and causes an accident. When the vehicle overturns, Kumba manages to escape and the rabbit reveals that only one animal knows the way to the magical lake. The creature then advises the zebra to climb the mountain and look for the black eagle. After everything that has happened, Mama V decides to leave with Kumba and takes the ostrich with them. While climbing the mountain of rocks, Bradley almost falls and Kumba asks his friends to wait there while he goes to find the eagle. However, the ostrich decides to continue climbing with him and Mama V has to stay behind alone, as her body is too big to pass between the rocks. When the pair finally reach the top, they come across a group of rodents who begin a ritual to get rid of the invaders. Discovering that they are looking for the black eagle, the creatures capture Bradley and push him off the cliff. Luckily, the ostrich gets stuck on a branch and manages to survive, as its wings don't allow it to fly. Suddenly, the black eagle appears and all the rodents hide to avoid being captured by the predator, who orders Kumba to climb into his nest to find him. Immediately, the creature attacks the young zebra and asks why the animal has come there. However, when it finds out that Kumba wants its help to get his stripes, the bird orders him to leave. Saki is an albino black eagle and knows very well what it's like to feel different from all the other individuals of his species. So when Kumba asks how to get to the magic lake, the bird decides to point the way and reveals that the place the zebra is looking for is called Nile Mountain. To get there, Kumba will have to pass through the Valley of Desolation and then the abandoned farm. Finally, the zebra will have to go around a salt pan to find Pengo's cave. The leopard who was born blind in one eye was excluded from his pack and abandoned by his own kind when he was still a cub. What no one imagined was that blindness would give him a better sense of smell than any other feline and, when he grew up, Pengo became a great hunter. After getting revenge on his family, he turned into a bitter creature who continues to harm other animals for pleasure. After meeting Kumba, Rabbit felt encouraged to leave the animal sanctuary and fight for his freedom. Inspired by the rabbit, the other creatures in the shelter decide to follow him and the group also sets off in search of the magical lake. That day, Siko goes to talk to Tabo, Tombi's father, and asks for his help in finding a new refuge for the herd, because if they stay there, they will all perish of thirst. The herd then unites to walk into the unknown, since most of those zebras have never left the oasis before. Just before nightfall, Kumba and his friends arrive in the Valley of Desolation and, after crossing it, find an abandoned farm, where they decide to stop and rest. 
They are about to drink the water from a fountain when a sheep dressed as a wild sheep comes out of the house and starts chasing them with its fake horns. During his escape, one of Kumba's paws gets stuck in the wooden floor and he falls to the ground. At this point, the zebra asks her friends to run to the mountain while she distracts the crazy sheep. But instead of fleeing, Mama V and Bradley stay to help their friend trap the animal and discover that they are on their way to Pengo's lair. Knowing that his friends would not accompany him on this trip if they knew that the lake was in the leopard's cave, Kumba decided to hide this information and now Mama V and Bradley no longer trust him. At this point, the wildebeest begins to cry, as she remembers the punishment of her baby, which was devoured by Pango. Ashamed, Kumba decides to continue his journey alone and leaves the pair behind. Hours later, Mama V and Bradley decide to go in the opposite direction and end up being found by the leopard. Pango chases them through the desert and manages to surround them. The feline is looking for Kumba and asks where he has gone, so, in order not to be devoured, the ostrich reveals that his friend is on his way to Nile Mountain. Immediately, Pango goes after him and Mama V says that they must find Kumba before he is devoured. After a long journey without drinking or eating, the young zebra faints and, when he wakes up, he sees his mother walking across the salt flats to meet him. However, the truth is that this is not his mother, but the old animal he led into the oasis to drink water. After feeding him, Janie asks the young animal to accompany her and takes him to a safe place. After a few days of walking, the zebras come across some clouds and are relieved to learn that a storm is approaching. At this point, the gang come across a rabbit and the other animals from the sanctuary and discover that they are on their way to meet Kumba. Upon hearing this, Siko is surprised to learn that his son is alive and asks the whole herd to follow the rabbit as he runs to Nile Mountain. With Janie's help, Kumba manages to reach his destination, but before he can enter the cave, a bolt of lightning sets fire to a bush right in front of him and he has to walk through the fire. As the zebras walk around the abandoned farm, they end up being spotted by the impalas, who decide to follow them. Skalk is also on his way to the mountain and, when he sees the sheep trapped in the paddock, he decides to free it, but the creature is afraid of being devoured. Then the wild dog reveals that he has split from his pack and now wants to live in peace with all the animals. It's getting dark when Siko manages to overtake Mama V and Bradley and the pair wonder who that zebra is that's running at high speed towards the mountain. Arriving at the cave, Kumba sees some drawings on the wall and soon realizes that he has found the right place. The zebra then crosses a small passage in search of the lake. Its father tries to go after them, but his body is too big to cross, so the wildebeest uses its horns to try and break the rock. At that moment, the herd and the other animals on their way up the mountain are stopped by the flames and Tombi is distraught at not being able to get to her friend. Finally, after weeks of searching the desert for Kumba, Pango manages to find him and remains hidden in the darkness, waiting for the right moment to attack the young zebra. While walking through the cave, Kumba comes across the magical lake and feels that all his efforts to cross the Karoo Desert have paid off. Then, when the cub is about to enter the water to get his reward, he realizes that he doesn't want to be like all the zebras and comes to the conclusion that the color of his coat is something that makes him unique. Just then, Pango appears and tells him about the prophecy that says a zebra with only half of its body striped will be born and make one of the leopards the most powerful animal in the desert. So Pango eliminated all the members of his clan so as not to risk losing the chance to make this prophecy come true. Realizing that he is about to be devoured, Kumba immediately runs away and is chased by the leopard, which, while running at high speed, ends up slipping and knocking down numerous rocks that were supporting the cave. At this point, Pango ends up falling to the ground, but he doesn't give up his hunt and uses his keen sense of smell to locate the zebra's hiding place. Once again, Kumba manages to escape and runs towards the magic lake to try to escape, but Pango jumps on top of him and they both fall into the water. While the zebra is fighting for his own survival, the cave begins to collapse and he manages to escape the clutches of the feline, who is paralyzed by a memory from his childhood. It's the first time Pango has been in that lake since the day his mother pushed him in and he almost drowned. Kumba takes advantage of the predator's distraction to escape, but when he reaches the surface, the leopard appears and pulls him back into the water. However, they both have to separate when they are almost crushed by a gigantic rock and suddenly the rocks that make up the cave begin to crack. At that moment, Siko, Mama V and Bradley have to run to avoid being crushed and they all witness a waterfall being formed with the water from the lake. Suddenly, Pango and Kumba appear and both slip on the rocks, seeing his son being chased by the leopard. Siko becomes desperate and all the other zebras in the herd begin to hope for the animal's survival. During his escape, Kumba spots a rock about to fall off the cliff and jumps onto it. When Pango goes after him, the rock can't support the weight of his body and the feline ends up being crushed. To avoid suffering the same fate as his enemy, the young animal decides to jump into the water and all his friends rush to the lake to rescue him. 
When Siko approaches his son, he sees Tombi next to him and everyone comes to the conclusion that Kumba is eliminated. Just then, for the first time in years, it starts to rain and, at the same time, another miracle happens, Kumba starts breathing again. Relieved, everyone celebrates the young man's life and Tombi runs to hug him. From that day on, the different species lived together in perfect harmony in the new oasis that had been formed and Kumba finally began to be seen in a positive light by the other zebras who had despised him. After all this traveling, this group of survivors discovers that the differences between them are precisely what make them stronger. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.